welcome again in your online social science class. I am Tanushri ma'am. In my today's video, we are going to discuss about the first chapter of your history syllabus which is French Revolution. In your class 9 history, you are going to learn about mainly world history. The first chapter, you will learn about French Revolution. In the second chapter, you will learn about the socialism in Russia. And the third chapter is about the Nazism, the rise of Nazism in Germany. In the first chapter, the French Revolution, today I am going to start. In this video, I am going to uh, give you a brief description or introduction of the French Revolution, why it is called French Revolution, why the revolution, uh, the term revolution attached with it and a short brief description regarding the society of the French society before the revolution was started. Okay, Now let's begin. Why uh, it is referred as revolution? Before starting this, let's uh, take a look about what is revolution, what uh, incident or what happened or what kind of activity we are actually referred as a revolution. Revolution is a fundamental and relatively sudden change in a political power and a political organization which occurs uh, on a, which occurs when the population revolts against the government. Clear? That means any activity was done by the people of the country and it has a very deep impact not only socially and economic, economically but also very much politically that means the political scenario that the citizen of the that country are lived in have a uh, change entirely it shifted to from it shifted from one form to another that incidents or that thing we are referred as revolution clear discuss about why the incident that happened in the France is referred as French, uh, French Revolution. French Revolution was a, a unique kind of incident in the world politics. It lasted from 1789 to 1799. Okay. It is uh, why it is unique because it actually demolishing the monarchical system of the France. Because of that incident, the monarchy of, a Fran of the France was demolished. It shifted from a one form of a government to another. Not only that, it's actually forming a constitution. Okay, It's actually forming a constitution based on the principle of the liberty, freedom and um, fraternity. Clear? Another thing that it is turned France from a monarchical system to a republic and later on that system is referred as the constitutional monarchy. Clear? That is why it is referred as revolution, French revolution. Because if you are going back to that time in the 18th century what are the countries that are surrounded by the France or most of the European countries are um, having the government, all of the government are actually a monarchical system. There is a no concept of the representative of the people. The Whatever the government are there, the main thing of the all the government is that kingship. That means whatever the ruler will come to the power, they will come due to the hereditary. They are belong to a certain kind of a dynasty. That is why they will be your next king. There will be the no rule of a people of choosing their own ruler or own king. In that kind of a scenario, in that kind of an uh, environment, the France taking to uh, the France moving to a system from a monarchical system where to a represent kind of a partially representative government where people have a role to play in it. It's a huge thing. That is why it is unique of its kind and referred and the whole thing or whole incidents are actually referred at the French Revolution. Another thing I uh, need to say, what is monarchy? Monarchy is actually a system, a kind of a, uh, a form of a government where the ruler is actually uh, the ruler is a king and
and who will be became king and will be the next king next king because of the hereditary okay the, there is a no point of uh, whether the person is eligible whether he is a uh, many when a good for the uh, post or not no the uh, ruler will be chosen due to the hereditary thing this kind of a government is called as a monarchical government okay so why it is called as a french revolution hopefully it's clear to you okay now come what was the polit uh, what was the social scenario of that time which led to the french revolution now tell me one thing when we start revolt when we start revolt in your day to day life when you start uh, revolt against any organization or anyone when you are dissatisfied with the organization when um, you are not happy with your circumstances when you are want to change you when uh, you want to change your surrounding from where you are belongs from your because somewhere it is not satisfied you to live a good life and it will be not a shorter span of time it's nothing that two or three days you are have you are facing some problem do you start the revolt no it be in a longer span of a time when you are many continuously dissatisfied with the organization or dissatisfied with the government after that you will think about any revolt or um, in you are many yes you think about any revolt not before of that so the french society is a very big reason behind the french revolution okay now uh, this move uh, move to little uh, before in the 17 uh, 74 uh, a boy a uh, name louis 16 a very young by 20 years young old uh, boy from bourbon family ascended to the throne of the france clear in the year 1774 the time when he became the king the treasure the uh, the uh, french treasure was almost empty and france is going through a tremendous financial crisis okay uh, that time actually france is involved in many war in different parts of the world that is why uh, it has a tremendous pressure uh, on its uh, money on the treasury on the wealth they are money having a debt up money it's more than 2 billion livres livre is the currency livre is the currency french currency of that time clear so um, to come out from that economic money that economic crisis the only option that the king had to increase the taxes okay uh he de have definitely many the main income of an any government is definitely from the taxes that they are collected from its people and it's no exception in the france also so the king uh, wanted to increase the taxes which they are collected from its people clear now come to the division of the french society uh, why i am saying this because there is a, a very deep connection between the taxes they are collected with the section of the society what is it mane i'll come mane i'll discuss it later now come to the uh, division of the french society french society of that time that time french society is actually divided into three estate first estate second estate third estate okay move to first estate first estate the people who refer as clergy the people who come under this estate are referred as clergy second estate the people who come under second estate is referred as nobility clear and third estate the people who belongs to the third estate is referred as bourgeois clear now who are referred as clergy the people who involved in the church and involved in the religious works are referred as clergy clear that means the people are very pious those people are pious and respected in the society are many um, are come under first estate clear second estate the nobility the people who belongs to the royal family the people who are feudals of the france that time are come under second estate clear now move to the third estate 
the most mixed and most complicated state or section of the French society. Why is it? Apart from that two section, all the other people are came under this section. Okay. So third state is actually divided into three section. First section, higher class. Second section, middle class. And the third section is referred as lower class. Clear? Who are the people who come under first, uh, first class? That means higher class. The people who are the big businessmen, the merchants and the court officials. Those people are come under third state higher class. Clear? Move to the second class of the third state. That means middle class. The people who are peasants and the people who are artisans are come under middle class third state. Low caste of the third state, who are they? The people who are servants, the people who are peasants, the people who are landless laborer, bonded laborers, all of them are come under to the third class. Sorry, the uh, lower class of the third state. Clear the division? So the society is broadly divided into three states. First state, clergy. Second state, nobility. Third state, bourgeois. Third state divided into three sections. Higher class, people, uh, big, uh, big businessmen, merchants, the court officials, middle class, the artisans and peasants. Third, uh, lower caste, uh, lower caste people, uh, who are they? Uh, servants peasants and bonded laborers. Clear the section? So uh, hopefully it's clear the society division. Why it is important? Because first two estate that means clergy and nobility are exempted from paying taxes. Am I clear? Those two sections are not supposed to pay a single penny to the uh, government in term of taxes. All the taxes are paid by only third state of the society. That means the peasants, the merchants, the businessmen, etc. etc. Clear? And the 90% of the French populations are belong from the peasants. And from that 90%, 60% peasants are landless laborers. That means they are not owning their own land. They are giving they are labor to someone, some uh, else's land. So definitely the condition is like that. You are not earning enough, but you have to pay a huge amount of tax to the government. Whether many in this kind of a scenario or in this kind of situation, anyone can be many, it, many, it not possible. It, it can't be pleasing to anybody, right? So it is the main reason of their dissatisfaction towards their government because they are paying too much taxes if we compare to their earnings. Clear? Another thing, another problem that they are facing is that most of the peasants or uh, landless laborer have to give a free labor. That means they are not going to pay anything. They have to provide their free labor to the feudals though the people who belong to the second estate second estate clear that means i'm going to uh, give my labor to a certain class they are not even going to pay any taxes that means whatever they are earned is entirely become their personal wealth they're not contributing anything to the state or to anything to the government and still they are experiences some privileges which is given by the government so you are not doing anything or any favor to the government still you are experiencing or still you are uh, enjoying some privileges provided by the government it's definitely a thing which is dissatisfying which definitely a thing which uh, instigate or trigger trigger the people to get to having a revolt against the government clear Okay, so in this scenario, or it is one of the main reason why French Revolution was happen. Clear. So apart from this, there are other reasons also which influence the French Revolution. Uh, these are economic reason, philosophical reason, external reason, etc. In our later videos, we will uh, have a, we'll give you a brief discussion uh, on those topics. Okay. 
so in this in this video we are mainly focused on the social pattern okay uh, in what social condition that french revolution was happened so uh, go I, mean, i hope this video will helpful to you another very important thing since it's a very new topic to you so you must download the ncert uh, the pdf of the chapter from the ncert website and do read the text properly hopefully this video will helpful to you understand the concept of the french revolution if you have if you are having any query any question any doubt do leave your comment in the school website there is a section uh, allotted for it or you can comment in this um, the comment section of this uh, this youtube video link okay uh, so stay in your home uh, stay healthy and thank you